Good Tuesday evening, everybody. Come on in. I'm so glad to be back with y'all. I tell you what, let's get some dinner going. Kind of late in the afternoon because we ate uh, kind of a late lunch, so we're going to have a late dinner, which is not great, but it's good. Okay, what we're going to do here, we're going to do, I'm going to do a one skillet beef stew. So what I've done, I've got some, um, when I bought this meat, it's beef, of course, and it is a um, tenderized um, beef chuck, and they've cut it like thick steaks. It's about two and a half pounds. So what I'm going to do, I've already seasoned it with my, you know, my usual seasoning, everything but the kitchen sink seasoning. So what I'm going to do is dredge it in a little bit of flour. So I'm just going to pour my flour right on top of it. And just so we have just a little bit of brown on it. Good. This is about the quickest, easiest way, short of putting it in a bag, shaking it up. Just pour that um, flour right on top of it. And every last bit of it doesn't have to be dredged. Just enough uh, to just, we don't even want a gravy on We just want a little thickening in that pan when it finishes cooking. So that skillet is nice and hot. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting it in just like so. Nice thick chunky pieces of uh, beef. <clears throat> I've cooked these before. As a matter of fact, I cooked them just like you do steaks before, and they came out well. So it shouldn't take that long uh, to cook this. I'm going to say a good hour I should get it. We'll see as it goes along. I'm just going to dredge that up really good. So, what are y'all cooking this evening? Or not? <laughs> you know what? We had 90 degrees here today. Now, you know, that's something for uh, September weather. It's 90 degrees. So, y'all, we in for some, I guess, some more hot weather for the next month or so, the way it's feeling outside. Uh, I tried to make a video to show y'all some things I'm doing with some plants. If I get it together, I will certainly put it out there for you. Okay. And there's the other piece. So, these two pieces will need about a pound a piece. And I'm going to let them cook just like this on low for about five or six minutes. Get that out of the way. And what I've got is some carrots, bell pepper, onion, and celery chopped up there. I'm not going to put it in just yet, but in a few minutes I'm going to put my carrots in and my other veggies. And of course, I've got my little potatoes to put in there. I'll put those to go in last. And I'm going to drop some Brussels sprouts in there. This is going to be, I'm telling you, this is going to be a one dish beef stew, including the green veggies. So we're going to make this real simple, real easy. So when I get ready to turn, well, I can go ahead and put my carrots in there, really. Because you know, it takes carrots. Well, let's just wait until when I turn it, then I'll drop my carrots in. We're just going to let it cook about five or six minutes on each side. And then when it does that, <coughs> excuse me, I'll, and I'll let it cook with the carrots and just the meat. I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm not going to add any water to it. I'm going to put my lid on and let it cook um, about halfway done. And then I'll drop in my other veggies because I want them not to be so mushy but kind of, you know, not crispy, but, you know, just not cooked uh, too, too much. So... We're going to let this cook. we got to say 10 minutes cooking time just like this. And look, you can use a filet mignon if you want to. You can use a New York strip. You can use a T-bone. Use whatever beef you want. I'm using, this is what I had in my freezer, so this is what I'm using. I'm trying to get some of that stuff out of my freezer, y'all. So like I said, just season it up really, really good. Drain in some uh, flour about a half a, uh, a fourth of a cup of um, olive oil, butter, whatever you're going to use for your oil, and put it in there and let it cook. About six minutes, I'm going to say, on each side, and when you can cover it, let it cook about another 35 minutes. Take the lid off, put all your veggies in, cover it, and cook it for another 35, 40 minutes. You can, um, we'll, we'll see how the tenderness of the meat will dictate how long we cook it. Uh, you know, this kind of meat, the longer you cook it, the more tender it gets. So, anyway, we're just going to let that cook there for about six minutes, and we'll flip it, 
come back and uh, I'll put the carrots on and we'll take it from there. So y'all hang tight. Go grab some steak out the free refrigerator. Of course, like I said, like a T-bone or porterhouse or fillet. Now, you know that cooks in short term. So you have to get those veggies to a point. But we're just going to deal with this one tonight, okay? So hang tight and I will be right back. Okay, y'all got this, uh, Mr. Rose cooked on one side. Just flipped it over. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and drop in my carrots. I'm going to take all my carrots. I guess I should have cut them in a different bowl, but that's okay. <clears throat> Get all my carrots pulled off of here. Just drop them right in the pan. Just like I said, get, you know, it takes carrots a little bit longer to cook. Just get them all off. This is, um, okay, this is four carrots. Just, you know, you scrape them, peel them. I scrape mine. I usually take the knife and scrape them a little bit. And uh, cut them into little pieces. And this is going to give that... Uh, Authentic, as I call it. Authentic roast beef flavor. Just get them, get down in there real good, like so, like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on them now and just let it cook. Okay? This is going to cook for about 35 minutes. Put that lid on. And because of this cookware, I don't have to put any water in it. It generates its own water. So I've got it on a low heat. Um, and you can check it from time to time when you cook. Like after about 15 minutes, I can look right straight through the top of mine and check to make sure what's going on inside the pan. But if you have just regular cookware, put a, about maybe a fourth of a cup of water in there. Not a lot of water because you don't want it to really boil as such at this point, but you want it to steam up so it'll cook your meat and your veggies. So we're going to come back when this is done. Uh, we'll probably do this uh, one more time. We'll come back one more time. When I pour the rest of the veggies and then we'll just let it cook until it gets done. And I'm going to drop in also, like I said, some I got some Brussels sprouts that I had left over from Sunday. I had that many left, so I'm just going to cut them and put them in there. And that's going to be our veggie. Y'all, this is going to be a one skillet beef stew with the veggies included. Okay, so hang tight. Okay, y'all, now we're ready to put in the onions and the peppers. Just put them right around in there. Get them all spreaded out. You see how you see that the gravy is sort of making, sort of making a, a little light, light gravy. Get that, uh, let's get that, those veggies down in that juice. Meat sort of on top of those veggies like that, like so. Okay. Okay, let's get everything going here. Mm, I taste one of those carrots. They are wonderful, y'all. Absolutely wonderful. So now we, and you do know that the carrots, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, veg, veggies are going to make a little bit of grease, y'all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, my everything but the kitchen sink season over, over my veggies and make sure they're well seasoned. Okay, them all done. And we need a little bit more black pepper in there too. A little bit more black pepper. Now, on top of all of that, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and put these taters in. Let's probably get that meat on top of it. Is this gonna sit there and all the juice from that meat is gonna go right down into my uh, <coughs> peppers and onions. Go ahead and season up these taters too. Get them good and seasoned up. Okay, just uh, just place them around in there. Uh, 
about 12 potatoes. So like I said, we'll have, our, we'll have everything in this one skillet. I mean, everything is right here. So we have our, um, you know what? I try to cook what I think Kareem and I are gonna eat. I don't want to cook too much because I, I, you know, I, even though I wouldn't mind having some of this left over, but I don't want a lot of it left over. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the lid back on here, and this is going to go into another cooking phase. So while I'm cleaning up and everything, uh, let y'all know I got a little something to talk about. So what I just want to talk about, sort of, just sort of brief. And this is like one of those life lesson type things when we're talking to our children, our young adult children and grandchildren. It's gonna make it short and sweet. And um, cause I always do. Here's the one thing that I just like to say to y'all <clears throat> when it comes to talking to people that you love, family members, you know, it's just like in church, uh, they say when they talk about preaching the gospel, they're talking about preaching. That means you're gonna preach the pure word of God and let people know everything that you preach in church is not going to be peace and cream. Everybody's not going to always have a chicken in the pot. Everybody's not going to always have all the money they need. There are some things that, well, you know, uh, in the days of old, when you read the Bible, there were lots of things that were, whew, they were very, very difficult. So everything was not because it was in the Bible. Now everything was intended for the good of the people of God, and he never said that we were gonna have everything or bed of roses and this and that and the other. And this is why I think people always question, well, why God allow this and why God allow, I don't do those type of questions, I never have. Because one thing about it, I understood early on, is that what happens about what we're going through now goes back to the Garden of Eden. So that's a great study to go back there to understand why things happen the way that they do. But anyway, back to uh, talking to my young adults and, you know, whether they're my own children, grandchildren, or somebody else's, or people that I just know we get into conversation. Well, the topic today was about pride. And, you know, when we hear the word pride, we, we think about people who are boastful and haughty and all like this. So, but that's not always the case. Pride can also mean a person that takes care and, and takes consideration about what they look like, what they do, what they say, where they are, and what they're doing. And when you're using the words, um, when you use, well, at least for me, let me speak for myself. I, you know, when you, well, sometimes parents will say, well, you should take pride in what you do and how you do it, you know, what you look like, how you present yourself and things like that. That's a good thing. That's a good thing type of pride. It's not a boastful pride, not a pride where you don't want to listen to nobody. So, you know, when we're saying things, we need to make ourselves clear. So that was the gist of the conversation was that when I used it and said, you should take pride and the answer back was, oh, pride, you know, pride, you mean tell me you, you, uh, so you're prideful. I said, no, I'm not prideful. I just take pride in what I do and how I do it, meaning putting my best foot forward and pride will suffice in that space. So when you are talking to young people, you have to take the time, go into a subject and uh, almost do the research right on the spot. Now, if you don't have that information right then and there, that's one thing. But know this, as far as I'm concerned and as far as I understand, it is a good thing to take pride in what you do, but not a boastful, haughty type pride where you bragging about this and I'm this and I'm building you, that kind of stuff. No, we're, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being mindful and careful and um, caring about, you know, what you what you do, what you say, what you look like, things like that. So I'm just one of those little lessons. And um, when that conversation ended, it was like, oh, okay, because I went there, you know, I'm giving you the short version, but I went there and um, stood my ground. And so with, with young folk, sometimes, some, not all young people, but with, I'll say with mine sometimes, and with people that I come in contact with, they will take a thing 
at face value and not look beyond that. Some things can be taken at face value, but when it comes to other things, there's a need to go beyond that. Uh, when, when you you know when putting things in context, when you're reading uh, scriptures, when you're reading a book or a, a poem or whatever, you have to read what's before it, what's after it. Sometimes you have to go down to the footnotes and go look up some little stuff so you get the full context of what you're speaking about, so that you're not taking off on the wrong in the wrong direction about one aspect of a thing. So. We had uh, it was a good little conversation, but again, please take time with well, just people in general, not necessarily young people. I'm saying young because that's what I was dealing with, but just take the time. And even if you don't know the full thing, go search it out and look it up. And that's what I always suggest, even when I get comments on this channel about things about you know, cross contamination. That was one of the first things that I dealt with and you know if you know anything about cooking and what cross contamination is there's a real good explanation of it and um you need to go so I refer the individual when they I was doing chicken probably I'm sure so I referred them to some information on Facebook so again if you don't understand the full scope of what's going on and how to put things into context you can get that's why one of the things that I try not to do you know how people argue about stuff in the Bible or argue about politics. I don't like doing that. I really don't. And I don't do it as much as I can. But what I will do, I will speak on it to the point where, you know, to try to clarify. But I'm never going to argue and, you know, go back and forth and get all heathen on the collar like I've seen people do. So just know one thing. Uh, the Word of God tells us very plain, plainly, and all you're getting, get an understanding. And the only way you're going to get an understanding of something is to seek it out, study it out, you know, study to show yourself approved. Same way in school, the only way you're going to get the information pretty much unless you're some kind of genius. You got to study it, you got to read it, you got to write it, you got to talk about it, you got to uh, let it marinate a little bit before you get it so that you can get the full context and the full meaning so just take the time with your children uh and people who's you know who, who you give advice to people who you mentor and just you know encourage them to read to get into uh things that are going on in the world because that that's where i was today talking about you know understanding how the government works and the the very best way to do that is for make sure your children are taking civics in school and when if they are then you need to get with them and sit with them and help them to understand. Because uh, I was asked the question, you know, was it true about your vote not counting? Sure, your vote counts. If you cast it, it, it can't count if you don't cast it. So, you know, that within itself is just, it's, you know, it's a very simple thing, but it's a very dangerous thing as far as I'm concerned. If you don't know that if you don't vote, your that when you vote, you know, oh, my vote don't count. And I know what they're saying is that no matter how many times I vote, the people are going to do what they, you know, the powers that be are going to do what they do. Yeah, that too, but we still need to get out and cast our vote. That's our voice. Um, that's our way of saying what we want. And then take the time to um, you try to find out something about what you're voting for. I mean, you know, that's, that's the way that works. And again, I am so excited that they have put civics in, back into the schools. Uh, my grandchildren, I know, are taking it this semester, and I'm excited because they're going to learn some things about government that uh, they didn't know because so, they're, they're coming up on voting age. Uh, one is within, a, no, two of them within a year, and the other one is within two years. And my neighbor child is coming up this year, so these kids are growing up real fast, and they need to know and understand what they are facing in this world and what they need to be concerned about. So, anywho, this meet will be done here shortly. I'm going to get those Brussels sprouts in in about 15 minutes, and we'll be ready to eat this meal. So y'all hang tight, and I'll be right back. And while I'm going, you know, call with somebody and encourage them. Call with somebody and say a prayer with them. As a matter of fact, I owe somebody a, a word of a prayer to grab hands and pray with them, even in the spirit, because they're out of town. So find somebody to hook up and pray with. That just felt like I need to say that. So hang tight, and I'll be right back. Look at that, y'all. I wish you could smell it. I wish you could smell it. Okay. 
everything is ready now for the Brussels sprouts. So we're just gonna go ahead and start. What I did was just wash and uh, cut them in half. Just gonna put them around, right around the top there. And it's gonna take about maybe 10, 12 minutes for them to cook. I did season them before. So we're just gonna get them going right around the top. Get a few in the middle there. Whew, it's gonna be some good eating, y'all. So this is my one skillet. Um, put that little bit of juice around there on the top of the sprouts. Okay. My one skillet beef stew with veggies. So we're gonna do this with the lid on them. Then we're gonna add a little bit of black pepper. I think that's all about influence to get this one out of here. A little bit of black pepper there. Okay. This dish is ready except to uh, cook those Brussels sprouts down. Get that one over there. Okay. We're going to put the lid back on, like I said, for about. 10-12 minutes and it should be ready. So hold on, I'll be right back. Hey y'all, I believe our stew is just about ready. Look at it. It is rolling. Okay, while it finishes off, I'm gonna go ahead, I, I slice and um, butter some French bread. I'm gonna go ahead and get my little skillet thing going here. And I'm gonna put some French bread right on this little skillet. And that's what we're going to have to go with that uh, good old one pan beef stew. Sorry. There it is. Okay. You know what? I don't want this to stick. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it with my pan spray. Watch right, so. up. And there she goes. A couple minutes on each side. And it will be ready already, ready, ready. So, I hope y'all have a God bless evening. Uh, serving God as we should each and every day. I'm telling you, keep him lifted up. Keep him praised. Thank him for everything and all things. Give thanks unto the Almighty God. I'm telling you, without that relationship, if you don't have that relationship with the Lord, honey, what better time to do it now? And you know, um, our relationship language is prayer. We have to do just simply do one thing, just pray and ask the Lord to bless us accordingly. And um, just watch the Lord work some things out in your life. Because all you got to do is ask him, Father, Daddy, Papa, just ask him. And he'll do it. I promise you he'll do it. All you have to do is just trust him. Because he already told us oh, we could cast our cares on to him. He said the battle is not ours. It's his. I mean, all kinds of ways the Lord lets us know that we don't have to worry about a thing. But we just got to learn how to uh, give it to him and let him bless us accordingly. Because let me tell you, the Lord has so many blessings for you and for me, and all we have to do is open ourselves up to it and trust and believe and receive what he has in store for us. And I promise you, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know what the Lord has for me is for me. Um, someone was questioning me about... Um, you know, the, the money I spend on food. And I'm thinking, I was spending money on food long before uh, YouTube came along. And we've always, my family, we've always eaten. We've always been blessed to have pretty much what we want to eat and didn't have to, you know, do anything uh, illegal or irresponsible to, to have that. 
or food. So, you know, when God blesses you with something, the best thing to do is to give thanks. And when you see the Lord have blessed somebody else, don't judge and don't try to, you know, throw shade at them about it. Just be thankful for what uh, you see God do for other people. Because what he did for me, he'll certainly do it for you. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, because we need these little teachable moments. It's like I said, pre, you know, tell like the, the word of God. Preach the gospel. Don't don't try to sugarcoat it or anything like that. So I'm just saying uh, to each one of you, be glad for people when, they, when you see people doing well. Don't try to come up with all these um, off-color things to say about how they got something to question. I mean, you know, somebody even said directly to me, do I get food stamps? Well, whether I do or not, and I don't. I think that's between me and whomever. But you see, people try to judge what you have based on how they think you got it, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just saying that. said all that to say this. Be grateful for others as well as for yourself when you see someone doing well. And know this. I think it's in Timothy. In 2 Timothy. I believe 2 Timothy 2 and 9. What God has for me is for me. And what he has for you is for you. But you got to be able to receive it. And you got to receive it in spirit and in truth. You got to serve God in spirit and in truth. And be grateful for other people. So help to celebrate other people versus trying to uh, judge what they're doing and how they're doing. And so anyway, y'all. All that being said, this meal is done. It is done. It is ready to eat. I am ready to eat it. Would you look at it, y'all? That is my one skillet. One skillet, just one dish. Beef stew, it has the potatoes, carrots, onions, bell peppers, celery, and the Brussels sprouts in there. So everything is in that one dish. And I went ahead and made us some nice old garlicky uh, French bread that we're gonna eat along with this beef stew. So guys, listen jump on into it get you some going you see how easy it was it's so so easy whatever cut of beef that you want to use use it chop up your veggies and just cook it and, and treat your family to something good and something a little bit different every once in a while and this was like it takes about an hour from it took me about an hour to do this meal so guys love you keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down pray without ceasing doing something kind for someone and be and help to celebrate others as well as yourself and be grateful and thankful always to god for what he does for you the doors he opens for you and um you know have a given sharing heart if it's nothing but a word or a deed so until i decide to cook again y'all i love you so much Keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. And please pray without ceasing. Love you. Toodles.